Father in heaven. I thank you for your mercy and your grace through your son Jesus. Thank you for the opportunity to be creative again. It's been a long road, but I am grateful, Lord. Mold me, shape me into the image of your son Jesus. Save me and rescue me from my weaknesses that I may be a witness for your kingdom. Bless us all, O oh Lord, as we partake of this. Glorify yourself now. Thank you, Jesus. to another day on this 21 day fast of resurrection of victory as we lead up to our amazing resurrection service this Sunday we're so happy that everyone is tuning in and staying strong thousands of people joining together one mind one spirit one vision of oh, the Lord is doing wonders in our lives honor such a privilege to And we're just going to get in the spirit of worship, the posture of worship, humbling ourselves before the Lord as we seek Him, as we draw near to Him, as we ask Him to just do what He wants to do in us, to renew us, to restore us, to set us ablaze. here for you, Jesus.
Christ the Saving One.
Jesus is his name. All hail the King of glory, forever he shall reign. He came and redeemed our story, now everything.
Yeah. Mm-hmm.
Thank you for 
majesty reigns eternally. Father, show us your grace and your mercy today. Continually bring us closer to your heart that we may do what is right in your sight, that we may please you in all our ways. In the name of your only son, your holy son, Jesus. And everybody said, hallelujah. Clap your hands to the Lord. You can clap like a, a, energy. <laughs> Somebody shout energy. Uh -huh. Now you're awake. God bless you. You may sit. You may sit. You may sit. You may sit. Hallelujah. Our Lord is good and uh, his mercy endures forever. Amen. What a beautiful... Um, Weekend, our weekend is basically beginning today. Today we have prophetic service, tomorrow we have baptisms. It will be so powerful. And on Sunday is the grand, 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 grand. I think I may do a reveal on Saturday. At some point, I don't know what time, maybe early in the morning, we don't know, we'll see. Uh, Big Charles, what do you feel? Uh, you're with it? All right. All right, all right. Perfect. Well, I'm going to share with you something um, simple but powerful in the sight of God. Simple but powerful. Touch your neighbor, say simple but powerful. Well, say it with your chest. Simple but powerful. Now, There are elements of the spirit or there are signs of the spirit that uh, God marks you with when he has decided to walk with you. Every one of us that are listening to this word right now, you need to understand that God has marked you to walk with you. There is, a, there is a profound difference, and I mean this in all, all humility and, and truth. There is a great um, misconception that the wonders and miracles that can happen in an individual's life, it is the measure of their prayer. But this is not accurate because the children of Israel saw the wonders of God not because they prayed. They saw the power, the wonder of God because God decided. Amen. Now, where you position yourself with God is of the utmost importance. Many of us want to take the burden and the responsibility of God's working in our life. And others have completely surrendered themselves to the structure of the spirit that God has ordained. 
Now the better place to be in is to be in the system of God that naturally favors you without a shadow of a doubt and removes your responsibility in the grand scheme of what God is going to do. Amen. If you are ever going to see the greatest move of God in your life, please remove yourself out of the way. Amen. Hallelujah. If you make it about you, then you will be responsible for making those things happen. You see, when I look at uh, um, a young men of God and women of God, especially those who are, are zealous for the prophetic, it is very easy to become an actor. Yeah. Because when you don't have the spirit of the Lord Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy, the Bible says the, 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 the prophecy, is, how does it say? It? The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. So having the spirit of the Lord Jesus makes you to prophesy. Now if you don't have the spirit of the Lord Jesus, you will go to the spirit of Mark Zuckerberg. You start to use Facebook, Instagram to look like you can see. Then now you abandon the place of grace and you enter into the place of works whereby now if I don't do this, then people will not come. If I don't do that, then people will not come. So I need to do this. I need to present like this. I need to do that. The authenticity of what God planted in you dies because what did you do? You put yourself in the place of God. But there is an easy way. Amen. Because everyone that God has ever marked came into this world with a sign. Amen. Everyone that belongs to God, your birth was not regular. You may not know because you are a baby, but if you investigate in your family, you will find that there were diabolical and satanic attacks over your life Come on. before you are even conscious of yourself. Why? Because God does not decide to work with you now. God decides to work with you before you are introduced into this world. Hallelujah. Now, how do I plant myself in the place that those things are manifested? Now, look, Mark 16 and verse 17. Listen to this. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Notice. There is something that is supposed to follow you, not to go ahead of you. Amen. Signs follow you. They don't go ahead of you. Yeah. So some of us want to be vindicated with God right now, <laughs> but God proves you after you are gone. Hallelujah. You'll be in a situation, and I'm here saying gone, not dead. I'm saying you will be working on something or doing something. People will insult you. People will point fingers at you. People will insult you. But after you step forward, everybody begins to see that God is the one that is with you. Hallelujah. Now the reason why God does this, and we're going to break this down. The reason why God does this is because he wants you to be undermined. So that when he shows up, everybody understands that you should never undermine anybody because you do not know who God is with. Amen. I prophesy to everybody that is hearing my voice this morning. Those who undermine you will be looking up to you. As we are about to conclude this fast. We are very close now. Four days, I believe. Is it four days? Yes. Or three days? Three days. Hey. In three days, Come on. this word is about to be true. Maybe I'm just talking to Revelation online. Hallelujah. Can we refresh it, please? So watch this. 
And these signs shall follow them that believe. What is a sign? There's difference between signs, miracles, and wonders. A sign, a miracle, and a wonder. Mm. Signs, miracles, and wonders. What is a sign? A sign points you in the direction you should go. When you're coming to Easy Street, you look at your GPS to tell you what signs. Okay, the sign says turn left on this thing. So you are following. It's a map. A sign is a map. It points to a particular place or an individual. So when people talk about signs and wonders, they don't understand what a sign is. A sign will always point to the one God has chosen in order for people to find God. There is no address to God right now. Hello? Hello. When somebody says go and find God, ask him where? Because the Lord God resides within people. And if you find the person, then you find God. So the first primary sign that follows you is that Jesus begins to be highlighted over your life. Amen. Now Jesus being highlighted does not bring applause. It brings crucifixion. Mm -hmm. I thought you are Christian. I thought you believed in God. Uh, where is all your prayer? Notice, the first thing is they will criticize your faith if you fail because the sign points to who lives inside of you primarily before it points to you. So when people begin to criticize you, people who don't know you, know that the sign and the seal of the Son of God is upon you. Hallelujah. When people begin to criticize your prayer, begin to criticize how you dress, begin to criticize how you do things, even your mistake, know that Jesus has now marked me. Because if he did not mark you, then they have nothing to talk about. Why is it you are being treated at a different standard than other people? Come on. I don't know if somebody's understanding what I'm saying. Sure. They have set a standard for you because you have already been lifted. Yeah, 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 yeah. The standard they have set for you is because you have already been lifted. So it is up to them to talk a certain way. To create certain things. You even ask yourself, Lord, what did I do? Remember, Jesus was also crucified for nothing, you know. So if the servant is not greater than the master, you will be accused for nothing. But that proves that he's actually inside of you because the world hates him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So if you are hated for no reason, know that he is in you. Amen. When you're applauded by everybody, know that the world is in you. I want you to understand that. Yes. So the primary sign that you're being pushed up is people start just calling you names. Oh, she thinks she's all that. She, she thinks he's all that. Who does she think he is? All these things is because they, are, they have noticed that they're inferior to you. Come on. It's deep. So they have to find a way to sleep better at night because the God in you, even though you're not where you need to be, they have already started firing arrows at you. This is evidence that God is already lifting you. Hallelujah. So these are signs to look out for. These are signs to look out for. When you start getting close to God, notice, joy doesn't come. Battles are the ones that come. Why is it happening? You have been marked. Amen. 
And these signs shall follow them that believe. Notice your belief, not your prayer. Not even your fasting. Now you have added fasting to it, so it is even going to be worse. Not the battle, the sign. Remember, don't be afraid of battles because you have already won. Amen. You already know how the story ends. They are the ones who don't know how the story ends. You need, well, you, let me explain to you something about the prophetic that will help you. When you take the full counsel of God, you can prophesy a situation without even hearing from God, simply by knowing the full counsel of God. If they say you're going to die because of a certain disease or a certain sickness, the Bible says you shall see the goodness of God in the land of the living. So if you have not yet seen the full goodness of God in the land of the living, you can reverse that thing because the word of you being satisfied with good things, your lips, your mouth be satisfied, being satisfied with good things has not been accomplished. So you can stand and say, in the name of Jesus, I prophesy on this situation. Yes, yes, Why? Yes. Because you know the full counsel of God. Amen. Prophecy is not always located in, I heard a voice say, Martin, 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 you will make it. No, 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 no. There's a place for that. But oftentimes it's actually the other way around. The sure word of prophecy. Now look at this. It says, In my name they shall cast out devils. Now notice, this sign is no longer God doing. The first sign is God marking you. The second signs are you are the one that is going to provoke now, there is a difference between casting out a demon and binding a demon. Now, contrary to what people think, there are spirits that can be destroyed and there are spirits you can't destroy. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I should talk about this. <laughs> Apostle, should I or should I not? Now, people don't know some spirits die. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It depends on what kind of spirit. The Bible says, and the enemies who shall be like ashes under your feet. Which enemy is this? There are scorpions you trample upon, but they are still there. But there are some turned to ashes. Destroyed. Another time we'll talk about it. Not now. Why is God telling you a sign? One of the signs will be for you to cast out devils. It shows control of the atmosphere and the environment you are in is in your hands. I'll say that again. It is evidence that you have taken control of your own spiritual and physical atmosphere. When you are crowned in the spirit and you are positioned in the heavens... Spirits begin to obey you. You don't fight with them. They obey you. When you hear people saying, I've been fighting with demons and all this, understand they haven't been crowned in the spirit. Can I be real? Yes, sir. You know we have normalized this fighting. Oh, I've been fighting demons. It shouldn't be like that. Tell me where demons fought back against the apostles. If a demon has power to retaliate, you are never called. Yeah. Amen. The sons of Sceva were beaten by demons because they were talking about a Jesus they didn't know. Yeah. Oh, I did this so demons came after me. No, when you do that, demons are afraid of you. When they see you, they look for a different way to go because they know that one has the power to deal with us. If you don't become a threat in the spirit, demons will continue to put stumbling blocks for you. So God has given you power to make an example of one of them that is lingering in your life. When you arrest them and beat them up seriously, you send them to the pit, they will announce, ah. 
I saw a guy called Charles Jackson. That guy is in the Simi area. Sometimes Woodland Hills, that area, if you see him, how does he look? He has a beard. Like He always wraps something on his... That guy, go left. Run. Demons must see you and announce the God inside of you. Hallelujah. This is why you find sometimes people come to church and a demon will say, Ah, she's a stupid girl. Oh, she's a stupid man. I told her not to come here. Why did you let her come? Ah, I couldn't stop her. <laughs> she's so stupid. Why did she bring us here? Notice, demons were trying at all costs yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. to avoid this address, to avoid the one that is here. Why? There is already a bulletin that flies. This Easter, don't go to Easy Street. Hallelujah. Avoid this. <laughs> so you exercise power against devils by being stern and knowing your place in the operation of divine things. Amen. You need to start looking like a crazy person inside of your house. Whereby you stand in your house and you start talking to things by yourself. Come on. You. Some of you, you need to, you need to watch some Africans pray to change your life. Andrew's grandmother used to make me laugh so much, but it is the truth. Miss Onyang should be like it. No, it is true. You see, these are prophetic acts that if you don't do, it carries no power. You know, people think Jesus was just like, you demon out. No. The Bible says with a stern voice, it says you, with a stern voice, you don't deal with Satan being soft. The expression of the anointing can never be quenched. Amen. Amen. If you want to be proper, forget the power of God operating through you. Because how power is displayed, you must be intoxicated. Come on. If you are not intoxicated, then you are not in the spirit. Come on. For you to function in the spirit, you must be what? Intoxicated. That is why the Bible says, do not be drunk with wine, but be drunk with what? The Holy Ghost. Because when you're drunk in the spirit, you care about results. You don't care about what people say about you. Uh, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Hallelujah. You care about results. You don't care about, Come on. Uh, this is what they're going to say. You see, they will say that they, you Christians are giving us a bad name. They don't care about that. The only thing you care about is, do we have a response or do we not? That is the only thing that matters. When the Lord Jesus commissioned me to officially start his work and he showed himself unto me, for many, many days I was being taught by not only the Lord himself, also by the angel of the Lord that walks with me. Everything I do, no one taught me how to do. Nobody ever taught. I didn't grow up around prophets or anything like that. Nobody taught me to do what I'm doing. The Lord himself did. When God introduced my mentors, all they did was give me more knowledge of what I am already functioning in, in order to be more powerful in it. Not that they sat there and gave me something. No, you can only be given by God. Amen, amen. What we are doing here is not somebody just laid hands on you and it worked. No. It was enhanced by knowledge of mentors and fathers. You cannot sharpen a knife that doesn't exist. Come on. Come on. Ooh, that's good. I don't know if this is making sense. Yes, sir. God is the one who gives you these things. So there are things that God taught me that I just were very strange. The Lord told me, like, you've seen me blow on people. They'll be like, ah, where did you see people in the Bible blow? I'm not in the Bible. So what do you expect? Come on. 
Is the name of the Lord being called or not? So the Lord told me, when you blow on people, it will be like how I blew into Adam and he became a life. The life in you will go into them. Now, if somebody has a carnal mind, will not understand that. So you have to be intoxicated for you to trust God and to do it. It is not normal for people just to come in. Mm -hmm. are, are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I remember one time there was a woman that had a spirit in her. And I can see the demon in the woman. The angel of the Lord said, tell the spirit to go. And I went and I was like, oh, father. I said, I didn't tell you to say, oh, father. <laughs> tell the spirit to go. So in my mind, I'm like, hey. <laughs> if I say spirit, go. This woman will be angry at me. <laughs> what if she doesn't shake? Ooh, what if the demon doesn't show up? Lord, this is, you're setting me up. <laughs> <laughs> then he pushed me again. Then I went and I looked. And now my focus was completely on the evil spirit. I said, you, leave her immediately. This woman, she was a little Jewish woman. She was a little Jewish mama. Very sweet. She used to come to the prayer all the time in the house. All of a sudden, this little mama whose her English wasn't even great. This Israeli mama, her English wasn't great. All of a sudden, right now! Eh? <laughs> I looked, I was like, hey! <laughs> closing her eyes. No! Looking away, I said, oh. I said, you. <laughs> Leave her. He told me, blow. <laughs> Immediately. The spirit left her. Now notice, I am not saying go to people and say, you. <laughs> I didn't say that. I do that because I can see them. Have you ever noticed if I look at somebody and I say they have a spirit, they always manifest a spirit. If I touch somebody or I'm next to somebody, if they have something in them, I know. Instantly. That's because of the spirit of prophecy. But Jesus said, whosoever shall speak to this mountain, you are supposed to provoke this sign. This is not a sign that God will do for you. The clearing of evil spirits is your responsibility, not his responsibility. When God gives you power, he is no longer responsible for the management of that power. You are. Now I want you to hear me. Now why is it that you don't see the power? Because you don't use it. You pray, but you don't exercise it. Yeah. There's a problem. Oh, Father, I call on you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, open new doors for me, Father. But if you pray, open new doors, and God doesn't respond, it means he has given you an answer. God's silence is still saying something. Come on. God does not ignore people. God is always speaking. So if God doesn't say something, he has already said it. Father, open this door. Father, I pray. Open this door. The door is not opening. How about you open it? Mm, mm. When Moses wanted the Red Sea for God to make a way, God didn't tell him, okay, now I'm going to make a way. God said, tell them to march forward. Tap the water and it will part. Notice God did not say, I will come down and part it. He says, when you tap the water, I will blow out of my nostril and I will part the waters. Understand that God is a reactor. When you are crowned in the spirit, God begins to react to you. Hallelujah. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So God is waiting for you to act. 
so that he can follow your lead because signs follow hallelujah i don't think you understand hallelujah. if god is guiding you he will go ahead of you but when it comes to signs god wants you to do something so that he can show up and back you up and say yep i'm behind this one hallelujah so be bold enough to understand that if i don't create a need there will be no provision mm. i'll say that one more time if i don't create a need there will be no provision god will never come and tell you it is time to move into a 10 bedroom house because if you're comfortable where you are god is a spirit he doesn't need a house God will give you your heart's he desire. Is. So what is God waiting for? God is waiting for you because if you create a need, mm. then God knows to increase the budget for you. Amen. So if you don't create a need, there is no provision. So you are stagnant because you are praying for something, but you are not creating a need. Hallelujah. What does it mean to create a need? Father, I want a bigger house so that when my family visits me, when your people are in town, I can house them and take care of you. You just created a need. Yeah. So God will respond to your need. So it is in the same way in the spirit. Casting out devils is because you have realized that there are things that are blockages and they are stopping you and they need to move out of the way. Because a demon doesn't attack you for you. He attacks you because of who is with you. Yes. Amen. I'm going to say that one more time. Demons don't attack you because of you. They attack you because of who is with you. Demons attack you because of who you will bless. Amen. Demons come after you because of who you will touch. Demons despise you because of who you will change. They know they can't do anything with you. Come on. But they know that they can frustrate you. And if they frustrate you, your prayer begins to be amiss. From today, never spend time in prayer without dealing with some demons. Come on, come on, come on. Let me talk to the people online. Never, ever, ever go into prayer without slapping some demons. Come on. Even demons that are thinking in their mind or plotting. Come on. You see, we have been taught to be defensive, yet we are supposed to be offensive. Hallelujah. A powerful Christian is an offensive Christian. Yes. Amen. And the greatest defense is offense. When we look at the prophets, they used to scramble and scatter the plans of the enemy while they are still in their camp. When was the last time you rose up and you say, Father, today, where the congregation of witches is, the congregation of the wicked is concerning my life. As they are plotting, I change their plans that they fight amongst themselves. You will notice people starting to come to you and say, you won't even believe, I just have to tell you this. I, I wasn't going to tell you, but I'm going to tell you. Did you know so and so has been talking about you? Notice they start shooting each other. Then the other one will come and say, I just want you to know, don't trust her. That's it. Don't trust him. You know the things they've been doing. Why? Because where they were meeting in secret, God has entered because... Hallelujah. Because now you're no longer just dealing with present things. You are now entering into future things. You are starting to interfere with things. Yes, yes, yes. Because remember, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Meaning the future is not off limits. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Elisha was somewhere in a valley and a whole nation was discussing, we're like, man, every time we want to attack Israel, 
<laughs> there is a guy who knows what we are doing. Can you bring it up, Musa? There is a guy who always knows what we are planning. Do we have a spy in a, amongst us? They said, nah, man. There is no spy. Israel has a guy that can see even what the king is doing in his bedroom. Yeah. Uh, are you hearing me? Yes. Now, I'm going to prove to you that it is not exactly like that. Could Elisha see what they were doing? Absolutely. But it wasn't because he could always see. It was because he could interrupt what they were doing. Hallelujah. That's good. Musa, please bring it up. Uh, are you hearing me? Yes. It is because he could interrupt what they were doing. If you understood the extent of what is inside of you, if you understood the extent of what is inside of you, actually you start to think, am I really a wizard or a Christian? Because, no, I'm serious. You see, the problem is many of you like this Christianity that is powerless, yet that is not the biblical Christianity. Oh, I will show you in a second. Look, 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 12. And one of his servants said, let's start from 10. Let's start from 10, please. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God, of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there not once nor twice. So every time there was a problem, the prophet sent word and the king saved himself. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? Who is this spy that is amongst us? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king. But Elisha the prophet that is in Simi Valley. Amen. <laughs> Tell it the king of Israel, Revelation Nation, the words that thou speaketh in thy bedchamber. Let me explain to you why secrets are kept from you. You don't think of the future. For Elisha to know what these guys were planning against his king is because he was interceding for him. Yes, yes. God does not, your interest, that's why I'm telling you, you need to know how to work what is inside of you. Mm. If I keep what is inside of me dormant, not being interested in things that are to come, what happens? What is inside me also dies. It just goes cold because it's not being stared up. It's not being stared up. Amen. The reason why I don't do uh, 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 events that are going to come, I used to do it early, early in the days. I would predict things from January to December. I stopped doing that because too many people are doing it and it's too, the waters are too muddy. I just stepped back. Not because I don't know what is to come. Before COVID happened, we knew about it. We were aware of it way before. We just never went live and say, this is going to happen, this, this. No, but our congregation knew. That is why when everybody was closing their church, we were actually increasing. Because we knew what would come after it. We were in the no. We were not in the dark where, okay, we don't know what is happening. When people are shutting their churches, people think that this, it's the end of the world now. It's a revolution now. Church is only online. No, we knew that it's not going to be like that. So we advanced. We didn't move back. We actually moved forward. You are not able to control the future because you're not interested in it. Mm. You're only interested in tomorrow. Mm. Wow. Hello. Hello. Now look at this. Let's, let's, let's keep going. See this. It, it gets even more interesting. And he said, go and spy where he is. That I may send and fetch him. And it was told him saying behold he is in Dothan. Notice they knew where he was. Mm -hmm. yeah. They knew where he was. Keep going. Look at this. <laughs> Therefore sent he horsemen and chariots and great hosts. 
And they came by night and encompassed the city about. Notice Elisha is there. Elisha doesn't even know he's surrounded. You only see what you pray about. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm done. Hallelujah. Uh, some of you missed it. Please. Elisha wasn't praying for himself because he knows he's secure. Come on, come on. So when they surrounded him, he didn't know that he's surrounded. He didn't care for himself because he knows you're not touching me anyway. Amen. But he prayed for the king so he knew what was happening with him. God does not tell you about people or inform you about your family in order for you to gossip. God tells you so that you can do something about it. So how does, it, how does God know to tell you? He watches. Are you praying about these people? Do you care enough? Okay, if you do those things, then I will tell you. Amen. If you don't do that, I'm not telling you. Why should I? Yeah. Yeah. Are, you, are you able to hear me? Yes. Why should he tell you? There's no reason to tell you. Mm -hmm. You didn't show interest. Remember, if you create a need, God will feel it. If you don't create a need, God has no reason to say anything. You must create a need. Amen. You create a need by now becoming interested. Lord, I want to pray for this situation, for this person, for this brother, for this sister, for this and this and this and that and that and that and this. When you start doing that genuinely, not because you're going to go next to me. You know I've been praying for you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, God will not tell you anything. Your attitude is terrible. You want applause. You, you want glorification. God is not going to speak. Now watch this. Look at this. Let's keep going. Therefore this, and when they, and for 15 15. And when the servants of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, our host encompassed the city both with the horses and the chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? <laughs> Verse 16. <laughs> and he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Notice, it's his servant that brought his attention to, hey, what are we going to do? They have come for us today. See, you panic because, oh, the devil has come after me. Let me bring prayer warriors. If a whole army comes after you, it's because you are so dangerous you can destroy them. Amen. Stop being so panicky and everything, it's like World War Three has happened. Some No, Relax. They are trying to match up your strength. That is why everybody is ganging against you. Look at how they gang up against me, but we are still expanding. One man. Hallelujah. Everybody is a prophet now. God told me love is a false prophet. He's a warlock. He's a devil. Who is this devil that you people can pray and bind? Come on, come on. Every video they can find, they slice, they put it together. They slice and put it together. Instead of people going, people actually coming to church and say, you know, I saw a video talking about you. I watched it and then I was curious to go and see you. And when I saw, I could not stop listening. And now I'm close to Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> when God is with you, nobody can stop you. Hallelujah. Even in your failure. Amen. God himself will fix you. Amen. You can't judge another man's servant. You're not there when I was being employed. Come on. You know, especially this is funny. I always see people, sometimes people from Kenya will post and, and write, oh yeah, we've known him from Kenya. We know who he is. Where do you know me from? <laughs> okay, what did I do in Kenya? That the world doesn't know. I was very popular. Huge. There was nothing hidden about my life. There is no X-Files about anything. There's nothing. Oh, we know that one. Okay, how do you know him? Nothing to say. Because you see, it is easier to tarnish yeah. 
But the problem is when you are washed in the blood, you are dressed by God, you can no longer be stained. Amen. No matter what they throw at you, you can never be stained ever, ever again. It is impossible. Hear me. It is absolutely what? Impossible to be stained. Now, now look at this. Let me, let me push this. I know we have a few minutes to go. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Elisha was trying to show him his status. Notice it's only Elisha that is protected on a mountain. Amen. Yet they're in a valley. The servant is saying, we are in a valley surrounded. God opens his eyes. He realizes that Elisha is on a mountain surrounded yeah. by angels. So the young boy was the only one in the valley. See. <laughs> the reason why you should never fear a retaliating demon is because demons don't go to Mount Zion. Hallelujah. Ah, you missed it. Physically, you may be with them, but spiritually, you are far above. Seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Above every demon and every principality, above every power. When you're seated on Mount Zion, just because we are all on YouTube doesn't mean we are all on YouTube. Come on, come on, come on. Thank you, Jesus. So Elisha and him are in the valley, but actually Elisha wasn't in the valley. The young man's eyes were opened and he realized Elisha is up there. Surrounded by chariots and angels and all this. I thought we were together. Jeez. Notice, the fear of the young man was evidence of where he was spiritually. That's good. That's good. Elisha was relaxed because he knew where he was. The young man feared because he also knew where he was. Without seeing, his spirit testified. Come on. It's okay, Auntie Benz, you can shout, run, you can do anything. <laughs> I am always like still water. Do you know I'm like still waters? I know where I am. No, 100%, I know. Yeah. Me, panic button, I don't push emergency brakes, buttons, no. I'm, the way I am is how I am. Even if the house is burning... I will be still calm. Why? I know where I stand. Yeah. So I am not moved by what is happening around. What is It never shakes me. Because I know, listen, at the end of it all, I am winning. Amen. No matter what, I'm going to win. I can't be destroyed. I will win. Yeah. So none of those things move me. Because I am secure where God has placed me. Amen. So the young man was busy. What are we going to do? Because he was not in the know of where his master is. Fear is a telltale of where you are. Yes, it is. Amen. For God has not given us the spirit of what? Fear. But of love, power, and a sound mind. When your mind is not sound, you are under attack. When your mind is not sound, you are already under attack. When your mind is not sound, you see, I don't like sensationalism, if that's the correct word. When people are too into something that they're willing to do anything. No, I always want you to never abandon your cognitive ability. You have to yeah. think. Thinking must always be present no matter what. And that doesn't mean you're less spiritual because you think. Actually, it is evident that you're spiritual that you think. Come on. That is why I don't believe in blind faith. There's nothing blind about faith. The Bible says, through faith we know that things that were made were made out of things that are not seen. A believer sees through faith. Faith cannot be blind. If faith is blind, then what are we doing? Faith sees the impossible. Faith receives the incredible. And faith does the impossible. Amen. Amen. So if I possess faith, I see beyond what you and me are seeing now. That is why prophesying is hard. Because prophecy, you must have, and I tell you the truth. 
genuine prophets, not label prophets. A genuine prophet must operate faith more than a regular believer. Because hearing from God itself, seeing from God itself, it is a tremendous act of faith. It is not in guesswork. Oh, I have a word. I just feel like a... a No, to see. (laughs) To see. (laughs) To see is a different, different thing. The operation of faith must be literally on steroids. I was having a meeting yesterday with JT and my wife. We were discussing some things about um, some structural stuff that needs to be taken care of and fixed and things like that. And the the meeting was really about you just flow. You have no... (laughs) There is structure-ish when it comes to you, but there is none. So we want to know, the point of the meeting was, we want to know when you decide, we know you will not fail. We know you don't fail. We know whatever you do, 100% bears results. We want this meeting so that we understand (laughs) how best to support you when you just act. Because when you start walking with God at a certain place, you become like wind. Yeah. You become like when do you realize that the day I decided to do the fast for the church, God had already told me, but I didn't know what day. When God told me, okay, you're starting the fast tomorrow, I announced it, oh, we're doing fast beginning this day. I didn't even know that it will, it will be exactly. Amen. I didn't know that. I don't think like Amen. that. I didn't calculate the days. I didn't do that. I just heard and I did and that's exactly how it falls. Now they know that if I say, ah, we are going to Tumbak to Revelation night, everybody will say, amen, we are doing it. Mom. Why? Because they know whatever I say will come to pass. Why? And it will be successful. Why? I hear him. It is not guesswork. But this has to be provoked. There is a way you have to push and massage for you to be a candidate that God can say, all right. I am sending you information. I'm going to tell you what to do. I will tell you how to step. There is a protocol. If that protocol is out of place, everything fails. Are you hearing me? Yes. Now watch what Elisha will do, and this is what you begin to do after this fast. Amen. Amen. Uh, your amen is too small. Amen. I thought you would say a bigger amen. amen. Now look at what it says. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite these people, I pray thee, with blindness. (laughs) Smite these people, I pray, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Notice Elisha is telling God what to do. God is reacting to Elisha. Hallelujah. God did not just start fighting for Elisha. Yeah. Whatever Elisha said is what God did. Yes. So Elisha said, Father, make them blind. And God hit them with blindness. But let me show you the kind of blindness that Elisha prayed for. Keep going. <laughs> and Elisha said unto them, so Elisha went to the people who came to kill him. He marched to them. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. (laughs) Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. No, no, you need to understand what Elisha just did. The blindness was in eyes. He shut their processing ability. Mm -hmm. He turned off their brain. Yeah. If you knew how to do this, there is no bank loan you won't get. <laughs> ah, let me let me stop. <laughs> there is no business deal you won't close. No, you are too good of a people. guys are too nice. (laughs) 
There was a woman that prayed this prayer. Sincerely, Lord, I want to design. I want to do this. And, and she was an amazing designer. And she said, Lord, when I go to the place, may I be matched directly to the office. I blind the woman at the reception to see me and not be able to question me and lead me right to where I need to go. Come on. The woman got up and went to the place. Big designer, I won't tell you. Gets there, boom. They say, uh, do you have an appointment? He said, yes. So and so is expecting me. Okay, okay, okay. Took her directly. <laughs> when she got up there, the boss was like, oh, who are you? Uh, I came for my job. Oh, okay. I have 30 minutes. Okay, hurry up. No, I came for my job. God said you give me a job. The woman says, security. She was thrown out. Notice, God made a way for her to go all the way up, but she didn't bring designs. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking to the wrong people. Come on. Your preparation must match your prayer. Hallelujah. Yeah. You can't pray and then your preparation does not match up. Come on. Uh, am I talking to myself? Yeah, you're talking to us. Mm -mm. Now, in today's church, you'll be told only witches do that. <laughs> the man blinded a whole army. Everyone. He said, uh, you're, not, you're looking for Elisha. This is not the location. I know where he is. Follow me. The whole army is following one man. And he led them to another completely different city. And they don't even know where they are going. But they are just following. Let me show you what he did. <laughs> Uncle Elisha was bad. Mm, this guy was bad. And it came to pass when they were come into Samaria. That Elijah said, Lord, open their eyes, the eyes of this man. That they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes. And they saw and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. Yeah. <laughs> and the king of Israel said unto Elisha, when he saw them, my father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? Notice king knew who Elisha was. He called him dad. He said, should I kill these people? Should I kill them? <laughs> Listen to Elisha's response. Elisha was too gangster. And he answered, thou shalt not smite them. Was thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy, with thy bow? Set bread and water before them that they may eat and drink and go to their master. Deep. Psychological warfare. The guys are panicking. They are surrounded. Should we kill them? He said, no, 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 no. Don't kill them. You already captured them. Put bread and water, feed them, and tell them, go home. What do you think they're going to tell their king? <laughs> this guy single-handedly just, we just, we just found ourselves in Samaria. We don't even know how we got there. Do you think he will attack you again? May this happen to every witch, every, everyone speaking against you. After this fast, nobody should block you. Come on, come on. Amen. Uh, your amens are too small. Amen. Now, now look at this. Mm -hmm. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devil. They shall speak in new tongues. Verse 18. They shall take up serpents. What does that mean? You will not be afraid to deal with Satan. Amen. You will take him up. You. Amen. You won't see the devil. Oh, Lord. You see the devil and you catch him. You will not be afraid yeah. to take up serpents. You will not be afraid. What God demands from you. Yes. Be sold out. Be sold out to the manifestation of the move of God be sold out I'll say it one more time be sold out all 8,000 of you online 
be sold out. Be sold out. Be sold out. Begin to believe what has been deposited inside of you is enough. Amen. God won't come and tell you, oh, it is time for a new car. It is time for a new house. It is time for this. God won't say that. God will only mention those things that are important for your destiny. You can still make it to your destiny living in a one bedroom. You can. But that is not what God wants for you. But that you have to remember their desires of the heart and their desires of God. If you desire to be in a small place, God won't give you a big place because God is looking at, does it interfere with my divine purpose or not? If it does not de interfere with my divine purpose, I don't care. <laughs> Just like if you can decide to wear black, red, yellow, green, it doesn't change what God wants to do. Amen. You shave your beard, you cut your hair, you, you do whatever. It doesn't interfere with what God is doing. God does, that doesn't change anything. What matters is if you change location and he doesn't want you in a different location, now it interferes. So many of you are afraid of God's blessings. Please don't. What will people think about me? Who cares what they think? When you were hungry, did they care? Uh -huh. Now God has put the table before you. God is increasing you. Why do you care about what people think? No. Are they your God? No. That's why me, I'm an apologetically the way I am. Because I know the days of pain. Ah, <laughs> Them, the days of my pain, nobody was there. It was me and my son just looking at each other like this. And I was suffering. Nobody lifted a finger for me. So now when God has satisfied my heart with good things, shall I hide the goodness of God? That will make me extremely evil. That will make me extremely what? Evil. I will be so evil that I fail to inspire others that are waiting on God to see the goodness of God. All of a sudden, Gucci is satanic. All of a sudden, dressing nice is not of God. Why? Because when you can't get something and you want to sleep better at night, it's better to criticize those who have it. Why is he spending his money to do this and this? Why don't you start by selling your phone, give the money to the poor, and then we'll follow your example. <laughs> While you're busy online with your laptop, sell it. Give it away, and then we'll follow your example. Don't try to manage my money. You didn't work for it. Come on. Remove your eyes off people. Begin to provoke signs. A sign points you to a place. Wonders are mind-blowing. Those things that God does in your life that are so monumental. They are so big. That everyone looks and says, this must be God. Because the person we used to know. The apostle we used to know. The, the, the JT we used to know. The thought we used to know. Ah, this. Mm, the Lee we used to know. Nah, this, this. This is God. A wonder is that thing that God does that dwarfs your strength, but he still credits it to you. And credits it to you. So that when people ask you, you do their uh, Bishop Donko. Amen. Amen. You don't begin, you know, I studied so much. I'm brilliant. No, we all know you couldn't do that. Yeah. How did you do it? Amen. God wants things like that. And yeah. then what is a miracle? A miracle is divine intervention. Miracles are divine interventions. 
whereby God himself shows up, does something that it is impossible, does something that is impossible to be done by any human being, and no human being can be credited for it. If you can explain a miracle, it is not. Yeah. I'll say it one more time. If you can explain what a miracle is, it is absolutely not a miracle. Amen. I'll say it one more time. If I can explain to you the makeup and the composition of a miracle, it is not a miracle. Because miracles are divine works of God himself. These three signs will follow you as you finish this fast. God will mark you so attention will come to you. When attention comes, don't be drunken of it. Because those who are applauding you will be the ones that will crucify you. They'll be the ones that will crucify you. So don't sell it. Don't be carried away with them. Number two, you will become a sign that points to a specific place and a specific person, which is the Lord God himself. Number three, God will make you a wonder. Amen. Everything about your life will not make sense. Amen. Amen. I receive, I, <laughs> I receive it. Listen, I know I'm a big time wonder. When you become a wonder, people start uh, crediting you where you are by witchcraft and sorcery. I've been called a master mason, a high level warlock, Come on. <laughs> a, a soothsayer, <laughs> a familiar spirit operator, necromancer, Harry Potter. <laughs> no, all this, no, I'm telling you the truth. Notice they can't even pin down one. You, if, you're, if you know the operations of spirits, you know, and of the spiritual, you know you can't be all those. That's why even in the church, if you want to know a man of God that has no power, they will have like 50 titles. Apostle, prophet to the nations. Which one are you? Apostle or prophet? You can't be all of it. I know, me myself, I am a prophet, but God gave me a pastoral grace. I am not a pastor, but God gave me a pastoral grace. He gave me a heart to shepherd. Usually prophets don't have that. Yeah. Prophets are not good at managing churches. They are not good at managing things. They are not in um, not managing things, but they are not good in 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 being able to shepherd because they are sent to do something and they are out of it. That doesn't mean they are rude because a lot of people credit like I'm a I just say what God wants me to say and I go. No, don't end up like Moses. And the reason why you have not ended up like Moses is because he didn't send you. Because a prophet knows God is responsible for the message. I'm responsible for the delivery. If I misrepresent God, even to the worst person, I will be in bigger trouble than the one that God wanted to condemn. Moses was perfect in the sight of God. God even said there was no one more humble in his house and more faithful than him. One act of just hitting the rock out of anger. Yeah. God said, my guy, you're not going to the promised land. Because he misrepresented God to people who needed to see yeah. God represented as love and mercy. So even if God is angry, he is trusting you to not display his anger but his love. Amen. 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 God, move out of the way. I'm going to do this. All right, God. Okay, okay. I will tell them, guys, come on. He loves you. Do right. That's what he expects us to do. He doesn't expect to say, yeah, I will destroy them. You say, you, he will destroy you. He doesn't want that. He wants somebody that will calm him down, representing better. You know, when we were younger and there were fights breaking out, people would be two of them and 
they will be chill. Uh, the moment somebody shows up, oh, what's going on? Hold me back. I'm going to beat him up. That's how Christians, Christians are just looking for any reason to consume somebody. Yet God is not interested. Jonah taught us that. Jonah is sent to Nineveh. He said, no, nah, I'm not going. He dodges. And God catches him and God does all these things and sends him back. And when he goes out there, he says, all right, I'll do what you want me to do. I want to help. No, I'm not going back. He went and said, guys, your city is going to be destroyed, all of you and your cattle. He didn't even tell them to repent. And then he went and sat outside the city waiting for the city to be destroyed. Then the king said, hey, guys, let's fast. Even our animals to fast, perhaps God will be merciful. So the whole city fasts. Then God comes and says, ah, um, yeah, Jonah, I decided I wouldn't destroy them. <laughs> Jonah says, isn't this what I told you when I was in my country? I know you. You are slow in anger and quick in mercy. Now you've made me look false in the presence of all these people. I ran away and when I was running, I was saying, Lord, you're not going to destroy them. I know you, this is not what you want to do. Now you have sent me to do all these things and then you're telling me what I told you in the beginning that you're not going to do. Look, look at how intimate he knew God. That he knows, you know, that's why I told you sometimes God... You, you realize that we are truly made in the image of God and the likeness of God because our sisters have this and our mothers have these sides. I'm never going to talk to you. <laughs> Don't talk to me. That means, uh, or, or the classic, what do you want to eat? Nothing right now. Are you sure you want to eat? No, no, nah, nah, I'm good. Are you sure I'm going to go get this? No, nah, no, nah, I'm good. You go and buy something. So you didn't think to get me anything. You told me you want nothing. God is the same way. If he says I'm going to destroy them, it means I want to forgive them. Amen. 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 Open your ears. It means I'm looking for a way to show them mercy. I don't really want to destroy them. That's how God functions. And divine interventions will consistently and continually be your portion. Amen. Amen. I want you to rise up. We are going to pray. I want you to rise up. We are going to pray. Again, I'm excited for Easter because we have so much space. Do we have the video upstairs so we can play it on, on YouTube too? Because I don't think we uploaded it on YouTube, did we? Um, we are fully equipped and prepared. You know, after New Year's service, I was heartbroken. I, I actually... <coughs> Lovey wept. <laughs> I know I cried. I couldn't believe, like the fire code and all this, we had to send hundreds of people away. And I said, that will never happen again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, that will never happen again. Amen. I said, no, I don't want that to ever happen again. So we have an abundance of room. That doesn't mean don't get here early. It's still Revelation Church. It's not just church. We have a lot of room. <laughs> room. <laughs> but it is a lot. We just added another, another building right here. Literally a stone away. Um, with almost a thousand chairs. And I actually, honestly, I kind of want to start in there, but we'll see how the Lord will lead. Amen. But I will go everywhere anyway. So we have our overflows, regulars, we have tents, and we have all that. It's going to be magnificent. It's going to be so epic, and it's going to be 
so, so, so powerful. So I want us to pray. I want us to pray. And you're going to pray that the Lord will give you the strength not to be sidetracked by people's applause. Amen. People's applause are killers of destinies. A lot of the people that are online, even preaching the gospels, because they want people's applause. They're not doing it simply because they want to serve God. There are those who are doing it for that, but there are people who want people to be on their side. That is a setup for destruction. As a believing child of God who loves the Lord Jesus with everything, the only one's approval you need is Jesus's. Amen. As long as Jesus approves of you, he will send those who will join with you in order to fulfill a mission and a mandate. He won't send people that will applaud you. He will send people who will work with you. Amen. And accomplish the work God has destined for you. So your prayer must be, Father, give me the strength not to be drawn by men's applause. Amen. You see, when you start being raised and God starts live, lifting you, associations will start coming. People will start coming who want to relate with you at a certain level that, ah, yeah, me and you, yeah, we do the same thing. Ah, we are the same. No, we are not. Love people, respect people, honor people, especially servants of God, but don't become friends with people because of status. Amen. Look at everyone that tried to associate themselves with me were the first people trying to crucify me. Yeah. Thank God I never went to look for them. I wasn't looking for their friendship. I wasn't calling them. I'm not the one who sought them out. I never did that. I don't need that. God has given me my amazing spiritual family. I'm good. Amen. I'm focused on my work. I'm good. Amen. I don't need anyone. I don't need anyone to join with me in order for a certain outcome. No. Nah, I mean, I need that. I'm good. Amen. The Lord is with me and I'm good. If God brings people, I'm happy. They don't come, I'm also happy. If there was one soul, I will serve that one soul as if it was a million people. Amen. And I Amen. did that for a long time. And for me, it's fine. I don't need the sense of having people oh now me and so pastor so and bishop so and pastor so oh yeah i preach on some of the biggest day i don't care i don't care for that i don't care for that i have a few people that are the well i drink from my bishop my father some mentors and i'm good Usually people, when God starts lifting them, they start associating with people who are higher than them in order for them to be lifted. Don't be like that. God is the one who will lift you. Humble yourself in the sight of God and he will lift you in due time. Don't try to lift yourself. Don't rush your elevation. Let him do it. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Let him do it. Let God just lift you himself. If you try to lift yourself, you will end up in places and regions you should not be in. Easily. You will end up in regions and in places you should not be. I want you to lift your hands to the Lord. And ask the Lord that you will not be sidetracked. Amen. Lift your voice and speak to God. Father, may I not be sidetracked. Lord, help me. Give me the strength to not be drawn away by the applause of men. Give me the strength to not be drawn away, Lord, by the glory of men. Lord, I will not be sidetracked. May I not be sidetracked. As you make me a sign that points to you. As you make me a sign that draws men to you, Lord. Let me not be 
drawn away by the applause of men. Let me not be drawn away by the associations of people. Lord, help me to resist the urge to be pulled by the glory that people will try to put on. Lord, give us the grace today. Father, as you raise us, Lord, as you lift us up, God, as you make us to be your signs in the earth, Father, let us not be drawn away by the glory of men. Let us not be drawn away by the applause of people. Let us not be drawn away by the praises of people. Father, that humility will be our shield. Humility will be our shield. Humility will be our shield. No matter how much you lift us, no matter how you raise us, God, let humility be our shield. Help us, Lord, that we will not be drawn away by the applause of men, that we will not be drawn away by the praises of men. Help us, Lord God. Help us, Lord God. Help us, Lord. Help us, God. Help us, God. Help us, God. Oh, Zaria Talia Namale Beshe Telekea. He's on the Adabaya Telebea Baya. As we desire to be marked by you, Father. As we desire to walk with you, Lord Jesus. Father, as you make us to be your sign, Lord, we will not be drunken of the praises of men. We will not be drunk of the applause of men. Oh, Zeketea Namandiria Baso. Father, let the purity of our intention never be lost. Let the purity of our motives never be lost, O oh God. It will never be corrupted because of what men think of us. It will never be corrupted because of what people say of us. It will never be corrupted because of how people praise us. It will never be corrupted because of how people applaud us. Father, let our intentions remain pure. Our desire is to please you, God. Oh, Help us, God. Help us, God. Help us, God. To never be drawn away by the praises of men. Oh, Lord. We will not be derailed, O God. We will not be derailed, O God. Father, even when they persecute us, Father, even when they accuse us falsely, Father, even in the place of crucifixion, God, Father, we will not be derailed. Father, let us never allow the opinions of people to draw us away from your purpose in our lives. Lord, make us your sign, O God. Father, that no opinion of men will draw us away. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. 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 Give me the boldness to operate in your strength. Give me the boldness to operate in your strength. Give me the boldness to operate in your power. Give me the boldness to operate in your power. From today, O oh Lord, I pray for the spirit of boldness. From today, O oh Lord, I pray for the spirit of boldness. Father, empower me like you empowered your apostles. Father, empower me like you empowered your apostle give me the ability to do that which is impossible give me the ability to do that which is impossible lift your voice and speak to the lord oh father empower me today lord god let me walk in boldness father for today we ask oh god that we would walk in boldness father from today we ask that you give us boldness lord as you empowered your apostles father
Father, that we will walk in your power. I katara mazon dele besita ya na bai. Me shoto kori ya taya na mande. Iza to bai da bate. Leke bebe diri ya sata la baya. Ma shoko tele ke pe abando. Father, boldness, 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 God. Every fear, every timidity. Lord. Lift your voice, lift your voice. God, let us ask the Lord to remove fear from you. Ask the Lord to drive fear from you. Drive fear from us, God. Remove every form of fear. Remove every thought of fear. Remove every voice of fear, God. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Give us bonus, give us bonus, give us bonus, oh God. 
Jesus name. In Jesus name. Are you here? Yes. Lift your hands to the Lord. Thank you, Father. Father. Give them the ability to see. Amen. That they should know that their future is not limited because of where they are. But that there are mightier things that await them because of what you have prepared for them. Father, do it for them for the sake of your name. That they would know that you have chosen them and called them. Thank you, Father. We are still praying. Um, let me pray for Mama. Can you put the microphone on her? I was praying earlier and God started to talk to me about you and um, God is making you the wonder of your family Amen. I receive I receive the Lord Jesus is making you the wonder of your family I receive through you the whole family will surely see a great transformation I receive for my family because of your prayer. I receive it for my family. There are some issues in the family and the Lord will intervene. Amen. The one I want to start with is your sister in Maryland. Are you hearing me? I saw a woman working in the hospital, like nursing or something like that. Yes, Papa. Huh? Prophesy, Papa. Prophesy. And I saw that this woman had gone through a divorce like maybe three, four years. Something Prophesy, like that. Papa. Huh? Prophesy. Three, four years. She Prophesy, went, Papa. She's been divorced. Prophesy, Papa. Now, I am seeing two children. Prophesy. Are you hearing me? Prophesy, Papa. I saw my nephews, Rio and Maro, so I know these are boys. Prophesy, Papa. Now the issue is, your sister needs to be exceedingly careful. Prophesy, Papa. Because I am seeing the children targeted by the enemy. Prophesy, Papa. Prophesy. I know her marriage ended, but she must truly be prayerful who she brings close. Prophesy, Papa. Because the wrong man in your house will destroy your children. Prophesy. I'm not saying don't pray and ask God if it is the right or the wrong person. I know she's already in a relationship now. Yes, Papa. But she needs to sincerely pray. Prophesy, Papa. And know the mind of God, especially for the younger boy. Prophesy, Papa. I am seeing a great calling of God on that boy, Prophesy, but the boy Papa. is targeted. Prophesy. Because I stood in the Old Testament and I saw that little boy like a prophet in the Old Testament. So I don't know if his name is prophetic or his name is Manasseh. I saw that one in the Old Testament. He's already targeted. The Lord, number one, wants to break a curse that comes, that came into her marriage. With I am just seeing the last name or oh, something. Holonu, Papa. Oh, 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 because even she went through some tribulations yes, in marriage. Yes, prophesy, Papa. But it has trickled it down, down to us. us. <laughs> because Papa. even you, the same battle you have faced Papa, with your four children, yes. same battles. Yes, Papa, prophesy. But the Lord said, Tell your sister to be careful. She's on the phone, Papa. For the protection of that young Hallelujah. one, especially. Both the children will be dramatically, tremendously blessed. Prophesy, Papa. But it is contingent on her ability 
to stand upright before God and to follow the path Prophesy. God wants her to go on. Prophesy. God will send her somebody. That's no problem. Prophesy. But it must be through God. Prophesy, if it is done out of loneliness or this and that and that, you may find yourself in a deeper hole. Especially, I won't talk because I don't want to say much because the target Prophesy. is on that little one. Flow, Papa. Flow. Prophesy. I'm seeing I'm not flowing. Prophesy, Papa. Prophesy. <laughs> now, when it comes to you, I am seeing you holding a basket in my vision. Prophesy. I am seeing you holding a basket. But every time you gather fish and bread in it, oh, people take it from you. Papa. That you don't enjoy anything that you're doing. The Lord said, you see what Elisha did to the military that came yes. after him. The Lord said, there's a woman called Marie. Yes, Papa. You did business with her. Yes, Papa. She took your she stuff money, Papa. and never gave it she back to you. Money, the, the Lord said, by Sunday, this woman will look for you. <laughs> <laughs> Say in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I arrest everybody that owed me something. I arrest everybody that owed me something. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. May they return unto me sevenfold what they took. Return to me sevenfold what they took. Lift your voice and begin to command it to come to pass. Lift your voice, lift your voice. May they return what is all unto me. Lift your voice, lift your voice. Oh. Lift your voice, lift your voice. Turn their hearts around. Turn their hearts around. What was owed you belongs to you. Lord, whatever was owed to me, it belongs to me, Lord. Ashaka tele de diaba, rozo teke te adima, izebele tele kepea. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Paya, paya, oh, zikate. Whosoever has taken from me, whosoever. Sevenfold. With interest, with interest, those who stole from you, stole those who terminated your employment, terminated my employment, those who cheated you, cheated those who called you, whosoever called in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, may what is yours be returned to you, be returned unto me. Akore tele zete abaya, ije debeli atomase, ekote adiza malataya, romondo koto yabai. May they pick up the phone and find you. May they send you checks in your mail. May they return what they took. May they have no rest.
name. Jesus name. Say in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Those who held the opportunities God gave to me. Those who held the opportunities God gave to me. I command them now. I command them now. To deliver it unto me. To deliver it unto me. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, Those who held the opportunities God delivered to me. Father, right now, every opportunity, every opportunity, every opportunity be delivered to me. Asha ketele kepea, risada la basote, lebe bebe bezo, ikataya kataya kataya, reketele gamadizi atole bea, romoshe tele bebe bebea, rukataya la madozi te adea, every opportunity that they kept the truth and deceived, Asha beria koya.
The Lord will move in a special way. Amen. Where's Bishop Van? Van, come quickly before I finish. Hallelujah. Give, give Van a microphone, please. Give the bishop a, a microphone. So, you're doing an event on Saturday that I'm going to be part of. Can you explain it quick so that people can know? Uh, it's called Manage My Wealth, and it's about... Say it again, Manage My What? Manage My Wealth, and it's about unlocking the vault of what is actually yours. I think sometimes, because we're in a fallen state and our inheritance, we've forgotten what is really ours. And so at this event, not only God will reveal what is actually yours, but he will show you how to get it and how to multiply it and manage it. So this is about cash. It's about cash, and it's about your true calling and inheritance. Because like you taught me, Papa, we don't chase money. We become our natural selves, and money will chase after us. Amen. It's true. Right. You create value, money comes to you. Yes, Papa. So it's Manage My Wealth. People can register at... MistressLolitaBrown.com. Mm -hmm. Everything is right there. And um, Papa has a, a... That's an old picture of me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good though. <laughs> so register, and then and then uh, Saturday will be amazing. Yes, Papa. Amazing. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Yes, sir. He's a he's a faithful man. I've been with uh, Mr. Brown for a long time. Him and his wife are awesome people. So prepare yourself. Um, this evening will be special. Beginning tonight will be really special. And also, oh, I'm releasing my, my, my music tonight. Yeah, 9, 9, 9 p.m. 9, 9 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard, right? Right? Esther Roses? Huh? Is that, Chaz, is that right? Yeah, so make sure you, um, you pre-order Children of Zion. It's going to be a vibe. It's going to be nice. It's really a great privilege to do this again, but... But prophetic service will be. Thank you. Come, come to the microphone. Small, small. Fire! Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I started too early today. Hallelujah! I want you to grab what you want to give to the Lord real quick, and then we are going to pray together. I want you to grab what you want to give to the Lord, and we are going to pray together. And the Lord Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords will be glorified hallelujah remember give from your heart give prayerfully or else it means nothing um, we have three days until we are done so make it count because we are almost over over the fast but the benefits remain with us Amen. the Lord Jesus be praised now and eternally Father, bless as they give, increase them and multiply, multiply them for your own glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Give to God, give to God.
If you receive power, you'll be more excited than that. Hallelujah. Amen. Only three more days, so make sure you stay in that place. Amen. Lord, we will receive everything. You have purpose for us to receive in this fast. In Jesus' name. So let's go to our closing prayers. Day 18. Amen. Mark 16, 17. Are we ready? Yes. All right. One, two, go. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Amen. Let's do that one more time. One to go. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Amen. Let's go to our prayer. All right. One to go. Father, you called me and chose me by reason of your own divine counsel. It pleased you that I should represent you on earth as the Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior, did. Father, the world cannot see you, but you have chosen for me to see you 
according to the mandate and access your Holy Son gave unto us. Father, I pray, prove that you have called me by the manifestations of your glories in my life. Let signs, wonders, and miracles be undeniable and completely visible in all that I do and say that the world will know indeed Jesus Christ my Lord has risen and is sitting in the right hand of power. Father, give me the grace to be diligent and humble that I will not seek self-glorification but I will only point to you. Thank you, Father of all spirits. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the power, Lord God, that you have reminded us of. And that as we leave from today, Lord, and for the rest of our lives, we will stir up that power that is inside. That it will not be dormant and die, but that it will ever grow stronger and be seen and revealed in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's amen. go to our closing prayers. Psalm 23, 6, one, two, go. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. God bless you. We'll be back tonight for prophetic service. Have a wonderful day. God bless you all, Revelation Nation. This is Prophet Lovi Elias. And listen to me, it's going to be a fantastic Easter uh, beginning from um, our Thursday service, prophetic service. The next day is going to be baptisms. And we are in the overflow sanctuary and um, construction is going on, lights and all that. We are making it all look so amazing because my dream is that nobody will ever be left out. Um, it usually breaks my heart when we have so many people line up as usual and many won't get a seat. But this time, this time everybody will have somewhere to sit. So, Big Joaquim, I see you. So, uh, we're in the lobby. We have the lobby set up too as another place for more people to sit. It's awesome. You can see this other setup which is amazing too. And, and this Easter, I'm going everywhere. I usually go everywhere during service, but I'm gonna go everywhere. It's a little overflow situation after the main uh, overflow. Obviously, we have the main sanctuary here and uh, they are working uh, tirelessly. I just wanted to show you what's going on. And uh, yeah, you, you know this place. I don't need to show you this. So, and then we have out here, the tents are set up which is so amazing, um, so much space. Um, on this side, I think they're almost done. On the, I think they're done now, it's just set up chairs and sound and all that good stuff. Big Kenneth. Yes, sir. Big man, Wagwan. You good? Yes, sir. This, this is an amazing, awesome man, it's an amazing son and amazing man of God. Amen. He's always, he's always working on something. And then we have this other tent and we, and we have the, the strongest, uh, uh, don't run. Where, where are you running to? <laughs> we, have, we, have, we have the, the gorilla, uh, uh, the dread man. <laughs> big Andre, they've been working like crazy. Oh, oh, are you doing big? Pretty good, sir. These amazing sons there. What do we do for you? You know, they're doing, is your voice back yet? A little bit. <laughs> A little bit? Were well, you having too much fun? What was going yeah, on? Yeah. Praising God? Amen, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Bright and early. So we have this set up. And uh, you can see all the other equipment are here. So we're getting ready for that. And I'm gonna show you our, our amazing new addition, which is just a few steps away. And I love this because it shows how the future is gonna be of this beautiful street when we take it all over for Jesus. So this is our new building. It's just a few steps down. So I was told earlier today that this is sitting about a thousand people. Hi, Maggie. Sasa. Hey, hey come guys, what are you guys doing? Fixing what? The stands? The stands. The information stands. 
Oh, okay, okay. Okay, okay, I see. Okay, you see them? Did you put, get them on? I don't run. Why are you hiding? We are watching you. <laughs> so this is going to sit about a thousand people. Or they said there's about almost a thousand chairs or something. And uh, see the first LED screen is set up. Second one is over there. And uh, lights are set up and all this. They are not done. I think they're finished tomorrow. So my goal is to, before we even do the tents, I actually want to preach from in here. You know what I mean? It's, it's gonna be fire. I've been saying it, but I've been saying it, but I'm really gonna probably start in here. But we'll see. But they have this other one up coming up. So for all those who are coming out of town, trust me, we have you covered. I don't want anybody to be sent home this time. We are all going to be together praising God, serving the Lord, and it's going to be beautiful. So for all those who are coming for Easter, we got you. Jesus will be praised. Come on.